All right, guys and girls, welcome to another episode of Astral Auto Repairs. <laughs> Can you dig it? All right, guys, check it out. Right here on the side of me, I got a 2014 Dodge Ram 1500 pickup. And today, I am going to show you how to replace the front rotors and brake pads. Coming up on Astral Auto Repairs. This channel is a member of the Astral Stars, which means we have a zero tolerance policy against the harassment of others. Anybody who violates that policy will be banned. For further information, please visit www.theastralstars.com. All right, guys, first thing is first, safety. That is number one when you're doing any kind of job up under a vehicle, even partially up under the vehicle, or removing the tire. You got your hydraulic jack right there, and then further back, you can see I got my jack stand set up. And I'm going to leave my hydraulic jack right there as added security. Yeah, boy. All right, let's get these tires off. We'll be right back. All right, guys, your tires are held on by five 22-millimeter lug nuts. And in some cases, you're going to have a keyway up there. So it's going to grab you with a 22, I got a 22-millimeter shallow socket, half-inch drive with a short half-inch drive, oops, extension. You can probably use a deep. And I'm using my air gun right here. All right. Let's get both tires off and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got the tires off. The next thing we do, take off the cap. Take you a towel. Yeah. The, uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Break the cap to the master cylinder. All right. Now, what you're going to do is take you a piece of towel. I call this a Timmy towel. And what you're going to do is stick that towel right about there. Make sure it's towel, not a rag or anything. And make sure it's porous. Because as we push the pistons back on the calipers, which I'm about to show you in a few minutes, the fluid is going to rise, and if there's nothing's there, it's going to spill out. And if you don't have nothing porous, it's going to clog it up, and you can definitely do damage to the master cylinder. Now that we got that done, let's turn the steering wheel all the way to the right, so we're going to do the driver's side first. All right? We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're in the drive. What the heck? Guys, look at this. <laughs> somebody, somebody put the caliper on and kink the hose oh my goodness and check this out guys this is the funny part the customer said he heard brake noise on the right side yeah because the right side was doing the work and this side wasn't doing nothing holy cow man yo i gotta go talk to the customer we'll be right back all right guys i spoke to the customer the customer got the car from don bullock chevrolet it's a dealership out here um he bought it used but the thing is, you got it from the dealership, so I don't, I don't know, man. Yo, this is from the dealer. I don't know, man. Maybe the dealership, they, maybe they, I don't know. Forget it. Let's get this. Let's get this done. Take. Hopefully, we can unkink this, turn the caliper right, and everything is good with the hose. Let's find out. Next thing you're gonna need is a 13 millimeter uh, shallow socket with a 3 h drive ratchet. I got my cordless ratchet here, <coughs> and what you're gonna need. You can use you gotta use a, a, you can use a 17 millimeter wrench, but the problem with the wrenches are the wrenches are too thick to go in there. So why they do that, I have no idea. So what I like to use is get me a pair of needle nose pliers because when you take that bolt out, a lot of times this this is a pin right here. It will start spinning as well. So I get me a needle nose plot vice grips and it'll hold it right into place. Then get your 13 millimeter shallow, 3H drive, 3H drive ratchet, and Take that out. See how this one will spin. And then you got one right down here. Let me see if that one will spin. See how it spins? Sometimes it might be loose enough you can take your finger and hold it and take it right out. All right, both bolts are the same length, so you don't have to worry about getting them crossed up. Let's take them out and we'll be right back. All right, guys, next thing you want to do, take your caliper out. Yeah, I kind of figured it wouldn't go out there. That's why I got a screwdriver. Take your screwdriver, put it up between the caliper bracket, and this is the caliper. You want to put it in there and pop it out. Go up here to the top. Continue to do it. This thing going, this thing going to suck. Oh, 
bike is holding on. It's the brake pad holding it on. You know, I never have always have a... Oh, okay, you know what? Let's do something here. What we're going to do, guys, take our screwdriver and right between here, I don't know if you can see in there, there's the end of our piston right there and between the caliper. We're going to take my screwdriver and I'm going to pry that back. Dang it, that thing ain't, that thing ain't budging. You're supposed to, oh, probably because that kinking is in there. Yeah, so you're gonna have a problem. If I'm having a problem, you're gonna have a problem. Not if their hose isn't king. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right, that's true. Holy cow. Ugh. Woo! There it is. Let's twist this thing back the way it's supposed to be. Now it's supposed to look like that with the cow This thing was really twisted. So let's put this thing up like this. Take off one of our uh, brake pads. Now these are the pistons right here. Now before you put your new brake pads on and on, <coughs> you gotta take these pistons and these pistons gotta be pushed back into the caliper housing. But don't push up against the piston. You wanna put your brake pad right there to take up the slack. And then you wanna get you a pair of um, either big needle, a, a big uh, vice grips or a C-clamp. So let's grab our C-clamp and we'll be right back. All right guys, we got our C-clamp. You want to put your C-clamp in there. Now this is a dual piston caliper. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to now push back slowly. Because as we push in this piston back, it's pushing the fluid back and back up into the master cylinder. So we got to push well, it what back. What happens if you go fast? Uh, it might pop that paper towel out or too much fluid is going to come out there. Because there's no way that paper towel, that piece of paper towel is going to soak up everything. Come in. So we got to push it in some and then check it. Now you notice what I'm doing. Because the one went in, so now I gotta switch over to this side. And start bringing this in. And as you bring this one in, this one will tend to come out, start coming out a little bit. As you can see, but that's okay. Now we're gonna keep on doing this. Now we're gonna stop for a minute. Let's go up here to the top. Now we're good. Our paper towel. It's still dry, but we're starting to get wet, so we can go a little bit more. All right, so now we're going to keep on turning in. Now we're going to get to a point when it's on this side, it can stop, and then just keep on going, and it's going to start pushing that side in. As you can see that got going in, but I don't want to go in all the way yet. I want to stop and go up here and look. See? Happened. I waited too long. You got the fluid started coming out. So let me grab that. So you want to do that because you don't want fluid spilling all over the place down there. So we get that. Let's get this out. And put a fresh piece in. And then we're going to continue pushing that caliper in till it's flush. That piston in until it's flush with the caliper. All right, we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got the uh, pistons pushed all the way back, flush with the caliper. That is looking good. We can now go ahead and take our C clamp off. And, I mean, we gotta take this little, let me see, let me take this one out for you. We're gonna take the outboard pad off, and we got these little clips on it. We see our, one of our clips was stuck down here. So, just so. Let's just get that stuck on here. Hold it on. And you're going to have to reuse these, so don't try to be cheesy and put the brake pads in there without them. Try to get you a good set that has the hardware with it. All right, the next thing we're going to do, guys, being that we're changing the rotors, we got to remove the caliper bracket now. So what you got, you're in effect, guys. Let's keep this. You know what? Let's get something to tie this up with. We'll be right back. 
All right, guys. Number one thing. Another number one thing. I got a lot of number one things. What you want to do? You do not want this caliper hang down on this hose and take a chance and damage that hose. So we're going to take a mechanics wire. Wrap it around here. Go through one of the bolt holes. Dang it. And we're going to tie it up and hang that. Hang that up. But you just said don't hang it. They know what I mean. You know, Sylvia, you can keep on. All right, guys. Now we got that hanging over there to the side. Next, we're going to do is take a 21 millimeter socket. I got an impact half inch drive. You can use a shallow if you want. Definitely want to use half inch because these two bolts are tight. We got to remove our caliper bracket right here. And the caliper bracket is held on by the two 21 millimeter bolts one and two. So we're going to go in there with our half inch drive ratchet. And also, this is a good time. See these pins right here? You want to make sure your pins do this. If it don't, get you a new caliper bracket or take it apart and lube it up. And what do you mean, what do you mean by take it apart? If your pins don't stick like this, what you want to do is just pop that out just like that, bring it out, put some grease on it, a silicone, clean it up first, and then put some grease and silicone on it, and then place it right back in there and snap back into place. All right, so let's get these off. Let's get those two off and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got both bolts out. Both bolts are the same length, so you don't have to worry about anything. Slide that off, set that down. Now your rotor should be able to come off. Sometimes this rotor gets stuck and it won't just come off. You'll be like, what the heck happened? Of course, like that. Now, we're gonna be replacing the rotors, so I really don't care how we get this off. But if you're gonna be using the same rotors, use a rubber hammer or something to knock it off with. All right, let's go get a hammer. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we'll give you a hammer. I got a nice size hammer here. One side is rubber, rubber. One side is steel, solid steel. Now, if you're gonna reuse them, you use the rubber side. <laughs> yeah. I think it's that start moving. But, if you ain't worried about it, use the metal side and it'll come off a lot quicker. All right, now that we got that off, let's set that to the side. Next thing you wanna do, excuse me, civvy. Next thing you wanna do, guys, get you a small wire brush, toothbrush wire brush, like that right there. And you wanna go around and just clean that up a little bit. So when you put the new rotors back on, or even if you're using the old rotor, that don't stick no more up there. All right, so let's clean that up and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got that cleaned up. Now we're gonna take our caliper bracket and get it out, get to the sun. No, it's fine. Oh, the contact points right there. One, two, three, and four. You wanna take your same wire brush and clean that up clean all four up all right let's clean that up and we'll be right back all right guys we got our new rotor set our new rotor up there next thing we're gonna do take our caliper bracket lower it down onto it switch sides now Take out two 21 millimeter bolts. Get one of them in there. Start it off by a couple threads. Make sure you go in there by a couple threads so it don't not cross thread it when you go using your ratchet. Then get the bottom one. Then we're gonna tighten those up. So get your 21 millimeter. Uh, get a 21 millimeter shallow so you be closer instead of anything in the way. All right, guys, now what you want to do on this? This time, I used to say you go to a stop to a little bit more, but this one, go to a stop and go to a lot more. Because <laughs> this thing is pretty tight. So you want to go there, just go to it. 
till you, till you can't go no more. And then a little bit more. That's great. Let's get the bottom one done and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got that up there. The next thing we're going to do is call the 007. What the heck is 007? That means when you're going to take some anti-seize or any kind of lubricant and instead of using your finger, get you a nice Q-tip. So you're going to get you a nice Q-tip and you I could have did this one. It's a, a, a bad Q-tip. What you mean? You said a nice Q-tip. So can I get a bad Q-tip? Sure, it got to be funny. I'm trying to do some breaks. <laughs> so what you want to do take some of the... I should have did this when um, the caliper bracket was off, but it's cool. And right on the four contact points, you want to put a little bit of... And stay away from the rotor. You notice how I'm not going all the way on there. Go each of those four contact points. And the reason why we do this is so when the, when the uh, callop, when the brake pads slide back and forth, it'll be able to slide. It won't get stuck or anything. Because if it gets stuck, your brakes will overheat. And you cause a lot of problems. We'll mess the rotors right up. Alright, let's get that done. We'll be right back. Alright guys, now we're ready to put our new brake pads in. Again, this customer went out of his way to get a good uh, set of brake pads. And how do you... I told him to. <laughs> how do you know... Where the screwdriver at? Right over so. How do you know you get a good good set? Let me show you. Now what you want to do... Hey man, they, they wrapped this thing up. All right, first of all, look in the back of your brake pads. This is called an anti-squeal shim back here. This will stop the brakes from actually squealing because the brakes, this, without this, it will call, you, the brakes can squeal and you think something's wrong with the brake pads. You want to make sure that's there. Also, you want to make sure it's riveted in. See how this one is? It's really held in there. Not those ones that clips on because those are cheap. And you want to make sure you got a new hardware kit. Some new hardware, none of that is cool right there. Everything is good. So. Let's open this up. If you need this, you got no business doing this. <laughs> so, open it up. You got your inboard and your outboard. The inboard is the one inside the car and the one is the outboard, outboard, outboard inside the car. So first of all, what we're gonna do is take our clips. These clips are all the same. And you want to like, let's take let's uh, let's go with the inboard first. So you want to take these clips, see how it put on, and you want to just fit. Wait, that. how do you know that's the inboard pad? This one? No, the one you the new one. Well, the new ones don't matter because they oh, can go either same. way. Yeah, oh, okay. they're all the same. On some vehicles, they are different. So, uh. but this one, they are the same. So what you want to do is take a clip, put that clip right on. Maybe it's crazy. This will be better. This sucks. Why they? I don't know, guys. Man. They, they might do. open up in the package. No. Okay. Give me that. All right. So we got one and. We got two. I don't like, 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 see, these, 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 hell, like, maybe dirt that's holding that on. <laughs> All right. All the dirt and grind. <laughs> All the dirt and grind. But it'd be, it'd be nice if they would have made these, uh, tighter fit. Yeah. All right. So now we're going to put this on. Now you're going to have the bigger curve and you're going to have the smaller curve. Make sure the bigger curve is out towards you and you want to make sure the ant, the squeal shim is on the Outside, not not on the inside face, and all you grinding like crazy. So what we're gonna do is put it right here. See, see, that's some more bull. You know, I, I want to, I want to, I want to squeeze these in so bad, but do it. No. Okay, get that one lined up. Put it in there. Then go down there for this one. And. Put that one in there. You got, I don't know if you're gonna. Okay, we got that one in. You're gonna see the outside one a lot better. Let's switch sides. Sylvia, you go ahead and trip over stuff. Well, stop putting stuff on the ground. Alright, guys, let's do this again. Ah, these clips, man. Same thing. 
see this. That's some more bull, man. All right. Let's explain what's going on here because I can't really show you on the inside. These little, that little spring little action, <coughs> right there. Okay, let's set this in. We're gonna set this in. That part goes inside where we put the thing, and then that little spring clip is on the outside of the caliper bracket. Okay, let's get our bottom one in. Okay, now what happens is, when you step on the brakes, and when you release it, this spring pushes, keep, pulls the uh, brake pad away from the roller, rotor, because if it stays up against the rotor, the brakes will heat up, and your rotor will heat up and warp. And it's possible, if it's stuck there, it will cause a fire. So that's why it's very important to lubricate it and make sure those springs and everything is set just like that. See how that pushes out by itself? That's exactly what you want to do. All right, next thing we're going to do, put my gloves back on. We're going to get ready to put our caliper down. We'll be right back. All right, guys, let's get our caliper down. And now... Putting this on, we want to make sure our hose is not kinked. Then you want when you put it when you put this, you want to make sure your sliders are in as far as they can go. And you might have to put lower your caliper down, and you might have to push the cap, push the pin in just a little bit just to get it on like that. And then go to the bottom and push. You're gonna have, see, like I gotta push this one in, let it drop down, and while I'm holding this in place, take one of the bolts. Put it in there by a couple threads to make sure it's not cross-threaded. Then go to the top and put that one in. Now we get our 13 millimeter shallow socket on our impact. You might be able to hold that right in place. Go in there. Of course not. Of course it did that. So again, get your needle nose. Hold that in place, and when you tighten these up, you want to tighten it up till it stops, and a little bit more. That's it. If you keep on tightening it, just, you're gonna snap it right off, snap it right off into that pin, just like Hector did. <laughs> yeah, check him out, Hector, now mechanic 101. He broke the ball off because he tried to be Hulk. I'm gonna put a link to his channel in the description below. Check him out. On what not to do. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, let's go over here and get the top one in. Guys, again, this, this is not super tight. That's all you want to do. First, let me bring this in from. All right, you want to go till it stops and a little bit more. That's it, guys. You And believe, trust me, if you wanted to, you can, you can go more, but you'll break it right off. All right, that is done. Let's get our... Mechanics wire out here. We're gonna change our paper towel up there and we're gonna move to the other side. We'll be right back. Alright, guys, on this side, we're gonna do a little something different, a little trick I'm gonna cheat you guys that I couldn't do on the other side because the hose was kinked up. We're gonna take two screwdrivers because it's a dual piston caliper. It will, or we would use one screwdriver if it was a single piston. What you wanna do is take your screwdriver, you wanna stick the screwdriver between the piston and the caliper or the rotor. Both of them on each side, and you want to pull back. And as you can see, the piston is going back. And you just keep on going till it's actually flush with the caliper. And at the same time, remember to keep checking your paper towels. So let's go back more. All right, I'm gonna go check my paper towels and I'll be right back. All right guys, I changed it. Now when I got my screwdriver, I got my screwdriver between the piston and the brake pad. That was the easiest way to get through. But sometimes you can get lucky and you can get the brake pad over there and you can go between the brake pad and the rotor, which is more desirable. So now that I changed my pad up there, my tape, my Timmy towel. Let's go ahead. And sometimes this is kind of difficult because you see how the, 
the brake pad is kind of stuck. Probably because of rust on So you know what, I'm not gonna take my chance. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it up just like that. Okay, now the top one went in. Now let's go over here and try to get this other one to go in. All right, both of them are in. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we're ready to move on and do the next step. Sivvy, what's next? Oh, All right, get your uh, needle nose vice grip, and I don't know what that thing is called, a nut. The slide pin? Yeah, the uh -huh. slide pin. Hold the slide pin so you can remove the bolt. Okay, and what size is that bolt? I don't know. Bolt's thir 13 millimeter, 13. shallow. All right, let's go ahead and take that out, and then we're going to remove the top one. Let's get both of them done, and we'll be right back. All right, Sivvy, we got both bolts out. What's next? Um, you're going to take the caliper out and get your mechanics wire and tie it up. So you see how easy that got that came out, guys? <laughs> well, well, of course. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> yeah, never mind. I forget what I said. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's get our mechanics wire. And hook up. Hook it up. All right, what's next, Ivy? Um, now you have to remove the bracket. All right, guys, remove the bracket. 21 millimeter deep or shallow half inch drive with your half inch drive ratchet. And remove both bolts. All right, be right back. All right, guys, we got our bolts out, set them down. I noticed those two brake pads down. We know the other Ooh. side wasn't working right, but these two brake pads wore down on even. Why is that? That is a very good question. And guys, this is very important. First of all, when your piston's up here, let me take this down. As soon as you step on the brakes, these pistons come out. So this pad in here does wear a little bit quicker than, uh, and just slightly quicker than the other side. But the main problem is, is that that's where that 007 comes in. If these pads are not sliding correctly, it's going to wear out this one a lot faster because this one even if it's not sliding correctly those pistons are going to push that up against there it don't care but this side will not be able to do anything so you definitely got to lubricate your brake system the brake pads and all when you do that so we're going to pop these out we'll leave our clips on there and, all. and something i didn't do over there what i'm going to do is take my wire brush now and let me see this rotor. Ugh. And we gotta get this, this thing is really messed up. And this time we use the metal side. A lot quicker. <laughs> and, man, he grabbed him. He wasn't playing. I'm gonna stop this car one way or another. All right, so we're gonna get our wire brush, clean up around here, clean up our four contact points on the caliper bracket, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, let's get our rotor put on. Great, it's up there. Now, what we're gonna do now is do the 007. Get our little Q-tip, and we're gonna lubricate those four points right there. Very important, guys. Do not miss doing this. Need those brake pads to slide. Great, got it on. Got your caliper, your cal guys, you can only put the caliper bracket on one way. You can't put it on this way, you got nothing to bolt to. I know some of you guys will still try it, but you can't do it. It's got to go this way. So put it on. Get your two 21 millimeter bolts. Put it in there. Start it off by a couple threads. Make sure it's not cross-threaded. You have your 21 millimeter socket and tighten those two up. We'll be right back. All right, guys, we got our brake pad set out. I wonder what happens if I squeeze it. Ain't much in it. It's up. 
I wonder if other other manufacturers are like this. You know, I don't want to bend these things out of the way. That worked a little bit better. Squeezing it, squeezing this part in. Just so that, like that. Yeah, that felt a little bit better. I'm gonna try that, try that guys. Just squeeze that in a little bit. Yeah, that felt a little bit better. All right, so let's do the, I'm gonna show you the outside and then you're gonna put the inside by yourself. So take it up. The bigger curve goes on the outside of the rotor. Let's get the bottom one lined up into the, lined up just like that. Just don't bring it all the way in, just right there at the edge. And then bring the upper one. We'll go in. And now push both of them in. Just like that. Alright. Let's get the other side inside in there. And we'll be right back. Alright guys, the next thing we're going to do. Make sure our pins slide back and forth. Great. Very easy. Alright. Let's get our caliper down. it over make sure the hose is not kinked <laughs> all right bring this down we got the top one going in start off by a couple threads make sure you definitely start this off by hand by a couple threads because you definitely don't want that cross threaded and right now I'm having a difficult time this thing's lined up and started all right there's one let's go down here to the bottom one get that started all right get our vice grips place it right between there to hold that slide pin in place and go ahead and tighten those bolts up. And again, guys, this is going to it, till it stops and a little bit more. Till it stops, a little bit more. That's it. Let's get the top one done. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, the last thing you're going to do is I'm going to show you the proper way of tightening up your tire. That's not you... the last thing. Okay. One of the last things we got to do is to show you the proper way of tightening up your tire. If you tighten up your tire, like one, two, three, four, going around, there's a good chance that if there's any rust or corrosion or anything in the back of this tire, it's going to cause that thing to set crooked. And when you're going down the road, the car is going to shake and you're going to think you did something wrong. Or you're going to go down there and curse the auto parts store out and say you, you sold me some faulty parts. But that's not the case. The case is going to be because you did it wrong. What you want to do is tighten it up in a cross pattern. You want to tighten it up like one, skip, two, skip, three, skip, four, skip, five, whatever. Go right there. So... I'm going to go over here, and on the first one, you just want to bring this one in just a little bit, just to set your rim. Just like that. Now, we're going to start tightening. We're going to start from this one. Cross over. We'll cross back over. Cross over. Cross. And then, if you got a wheel lock, um, I'm going to put this out there. Do, I don't I don't like tightening up the wheel lock as tight as the uh, lugs because this thing can strip out and sometimes I'm having a hard time getting this thing to set in here which just sucks. No, it still ain't set in here. So what I like to do on that one is I'll bring that in and stop. If you're familiar with your air gun or any air tools you will know when how tight you're tightening something just by how long that gun is hitting and um, how much you put it pushing on the trigger. All right, let's get our other tire on and we'll be right back. All right, guys, we got our tires on. Now we're up at to the Timmy towel and check that out, guys. Look at that. See how that fluid, that paper towel soaked that fluid up instead of spilling everywhere. So then we're gonna go ahead, take that out, wipe it up, put this on. Now there's one more important part we have to do be right back all right guys one final step now because we push those pistons back into the caliper when you go to step on your brakes those pistons got to come out 
go up against the brake pad and then push up against the rotor. So your brake pad will go, your brake pedal will go to the floor. Then you, if you try to start it up and go, you're gonna get into an accident. So what you gotta do is pump your brake pedal up. Now you watch what happens when I first step on the brake pedal, it's gonna sink down. See how it sink down? Then you're probably gonna end up hitting somebody right about now. So you gotta let it go, do it again. Now it's pumped up right there. Then it's a complete brake job. The brake job is done. Congratulations. I gotta give you a year buddy. All right, we'll be right back. All right, so today we had a 2014 Dodge Ram 1500 four wheel drive with a 5.7 engine. And we showed you how to replace the brake pads and rotors. If you guys have any comments or questions, you can post them below in the comment section or you can email Timmy at Tim at astroautorepairs.com. Hope you paid attention. If not, watch it.